بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد Continue on in our darus and fiqh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm nafi, rizq and tayyib, wa amal and mutaqabbilin. We reach the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which illustrates for us what if we have some, uh, something which is either nudges or something that, uh, e- that is on our garments, for example, blood, which could be najasa, or what if we have a little bit of uh, sperm, ikramakum Allah, on our garments. What is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if it's something very uh, simple? So in response to this question, we reach the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. An Aisha ta radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, Kuntu aghtasal al-janabata min tawbi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيَخْرُجُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَإِنْ بُقَعَ مَا فِي تَوْبِهِ رواه بخاري ومسلم وفي اللفظ, المس... في اللفظ مسلم لقد كنت أفرك من توب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فرق فيسلي في رواه مسلم In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم there is an immense amount of bun- uh, benefit in this hadith even though the hadith is very short and very concise Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrated that she said, or she said that I used to wash the impurities from Janaba from the thobe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then he would go to the prayer, even if there was some, a little bit still left on his garment, on his thobe. She used to wash it with water. And in another narration in Muslim, she, uh, she said, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that I used to uh, get the, try to remove the, what was left on, uh, from, from impurities on the thobe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or from Janaba, on the thobe of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would, and there would be a little bit left, and he would pray in it. In these two hadith of the Prophet wasallam, they illustrate for us that if there is a little bit, after striving to remove impurities from our garment, if there's a little bit left on our garment, it's permissible to pray in it. So, a, something yasir, something which is very little, on our garment does not harm our purity and the purity of our garments. And some of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is that it's permissible to remove nudges or anything else even with the fingernails if it's dried and if if, after using water or whatever to try to remove the impurities that if there's something dried you can remove it from with your nails or what have you and it will not harm your prayer and so forth another benefit of this hadith is that many or sperm is the asl of insan it's the foundation or the origin of of human beings and that since it's the asl it shows us delil that's delil that the uh, because a human being does not come from najasa so that's delil or evidence that sperm is not najasa that sperm is not najasa although some of the ulama have this view but this hadith and other hadith illustrate for us that sperm, because human beings are born from sperm, it is not nudges. Another benefit of this hadith is that the Prophet wasallam that it shows us also that najasa and those things have different levels. Because the Prophet wasallam. Uh, allowed for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha 
to clean his garment and although there was something still left, he didn't stress that she had to remove every last bit. And that distinguishes that many and, and, and those types of uh, things from urine. Urine and defecation, ikramakum Allah, those things should be removed. They should strive the utmost to remove those things from a person's garment. Another benefit of this, those are some of the main benefits of that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.